Welcome to, are we on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Welcome to the December 8, 2021's Board of Trustee meeting. Uh, we'll start as we normally do, with the allegiance followed by a moment of silence. It's been a busy season, people. Uh, we have a couple tonight. Patsy Omer, wife of formal, former Fire Chief Don Omer. Patsy was mother of Donna Omer, Debbie Perry, Chrissy and James White, Mary Ann Keenan, and the late Tom Kim Omer. She's survived by nine grandchildren and six grandchildren, with another one on the way. Jack Rydell, husband of the late Sally Rydell, father of Donna and Joseph Daniel, and Linda and Glenn Steely. Also survived by five grandchildren, three great-grandchildren. Jack was the owner of Rydell's Paint and Decorating Center and proudly served Del High as a part-time firefighter in the 80s and 90s. In honor of his service, our fire department served the family during the funeral all in attendance. Our third is Alex Griffin, son of Judy and Dan Griffin, brother to Tim Griffin and Kelly and Aaron McCoy, devoted uncle to three nieces and nephews. Alex died at the very young age of 31. He served many through his compassionate missionary work and dedication to those in need. May they all rest in peace. We extend our condolences to and pray for their families, especially at this blessed time of year. Please rise. Thank you so very much. <laughs> All right, we will have the approval of the minutes, Mr. Moody. Motion to approve the minutes from the Board of Trustees regular meeting held on November 16, 2021. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Motion to approve the payment of overtime for pay periods ending November 16th and November 30th, 2021. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Motion to approve bills for payment. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Report from the fiscal officer, please. Resolution 2021-192, Resolution Budgeting Revenues and Amending Appropriations for Expenses, <coughs> Declaring an Emergency and Dispensing with Second Reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I will second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Yes, Mr. Moody, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes, but I believe Mr. Cameron is fighting at the bit to say something. No, I, I can help <laughs> eliminate what, what is on this. It's got a few things. Most importantly, it has the receipt of the bonds that were issued um, and, and came in the bank last week. So you officially have to receive it as revenue so that we can then appropriate it. So that's 28.5 million with the issuance of the bonds. There's also 1.4 million uh, that was a premium that goes into um, our accounts to pay interest on the tax exempt bond. Um, then another thing, then we, so that's the revenue side and then the appropriation side where you're moving money into a spending account, that same bond money that same 1.4 and then also I have two million to come out of the TIF uh, that will go to project costs. So that was something I realized that I better do so I can issue Turner's purchase order and, and the architect's full purchase order. So that's, this resolution has quite a bit of movement in it dollar wise. Thank you. Okay. Next resolution, Mr. Rudin. Resolution 2021-193, resolution authorizing the township administrator to spend greater than $10,000 on behalf of the township to declare an emergency and dispense it with the second reading. Could you repeat the number of that resolution? 193. We're two-sided credit tonight. Okay. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I will second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Cameron? I think Chief Campbell can. Chief, okay. Explain mm -hmm. this. It's all him. Mm -hmm. uh, 
It's on. Okay. You hear me? Okay. Um, so what we are requesting funds for is uh, something known as a lunar tracking system. Um, this is a new system. It is something that has been on certainly on the horizon, um, something I've been watching for for a number of years, and now we get a chance to put it into place. Long story short, this device would allow each of our firefighters to be uh, tracked in a uh, hazardous environment. We'll be able, to, if any of them we can't get a hold of by radio or they become unconscious, we actually will get a signal from where they're down and other devices on the fire scene will help locate them. So we'll know who it is and where they're at, even if we can't hear them or they can't radio that they're in trouble. Um, so that is um, one of the expenses. Uh, I'm just drawing a blank here was a second. Mobile com, oh, locution. Yes, so then the second one would be a locution. And I'll, and I'll touch on these things because these are budgetary items as well. So um, locution is taking advantage of technology that we haven't adopted in the last 30 years. And it's gonna improve our dispatch in each station. This will cover the, the station alerting for station 30 and allow us to uh, separate the tones from the other houses so that one station gets the call when it's needed instead of for all three stations. It also uh, allows us to follow NFPA standards for firefighter hearing conservation. So it allows us to not have the Claxton Bell going at volume 10 to wake them up at two o'clock in the morning that they have a run. It has special lighting and special volume control that basically like wake up, wake up, you have a run. <laughs> Not that subtle, but definitely, certainly it's gonna help in, in terms of health and wellness. So both of these are gonna tackle that um, with this year's budget. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I will second the motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Yes, Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mr. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes, resolution passes. Significant transactions since the last meeting. On 11-24, our payroll was $306,000. On 11-23, we spent $128,000 for a closing on Rapid Run. And on 12-6, we paid Logan Creek $169,000 for the playground equipment. On 11-29, we received $150,000 for a CBDG grant for the playground. On 11-30, we received $51,000, which was for July, August, and September's franchise fee. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Trustee Correspondent, Trustee Seedy. Ah, uh, yeah, just a nice thank you and congratulations on a great day for the Delhi Christmas Parade. I think we've been through snow, ice, sleet, rain, wind, but Saturday was delightful. And thank you so much to the Delhi Business Association for all the work you did putting that together. And just remember everybody, it's the first Saturday in December, so if you want to start building those displays now, it's a good time. Thank you, DBA. All right. Trustee David. Yes, echoing what uh, Trustee Seavey said, it was great, and uh, the turnout was wonderful. If anyone in here was up there and saw it, it was really great. And uh, so hopefully, again, we continue to advertise it maybe, and even one day maybe dream of decorating all those businesses up on the pike and really making it a little winter wonderland, if you would. But uh, it was really neat and great to see so many residents come out for it. Um, flipping the script on the other point that I'd like to bring up, I want to thank the police department. Uh, you know, we had a few of the residents here. The new playground equipment is obviously beautiful. If you haven't seen it, it's right up, right in the middle of the park here. Absolutely gorgeous, and if I remember right, it was 800 some thousand dollars, and it looks great, and it's been Obviously, it is top notch and our residents deserve that. Unfortunately, with success like that also comes people that in a park, they're gonna do what people do in a park. And sometimes teenagers in a park might get crazy and uh, foul language and jump on the equipment and hopefully not vandalize it and things like that. So I think you know, out of the shoot here, um, some of the residents up there were a little bit upset and, and I appreciate it, uh, Chief and, and Jeff for, for listening. Um, and trying to increase the patrols up there as much as you can, but maybe for another discussion, we need to figure out the balance of what we can really enforce and not enforce, you know, with, you know, 15, 16 year old kids and 
you know, talking as they do when a mom's trying to push her one-year-old on the swing and just a, a tough combination there. So maybe signage or something of what we expect even more so um, is something I think we should discuss. Not tonight, obviously, uh, with a full budget night and everything, but um, certainly a concern for a few of the residents and, and obviously you can, you know, it takes a couple to kind of ruin it for the rest and that's what we want to make sure that that doesn't happen because um, this is a, a wonderful thing in the park uh, for our families and, and for everyone. But again, there have to be some boundaries there too, so that's all. Thank you. Um, I have a letter that came from the Hamilton County Public Health uh, that they wanted to thank us on all the work that uh, our departments and our employees did in the face of COVID. Uh, so I'd like to take a few seconds to read it. It's a proclamation and pro appreciation of Delhi Senior Center for assisting Hamilton County Public Health during the global COVID-19 pandemic. Whereas the global COVID-19 pandemic challenged Hamilton County and Hamilton County Public Health to develop and implement strategies to prevent infection and keep residents safe from disease. And whereas one of the key pandemic mediation tactics was the fast identification, setup, and operation of sites to provide vaccine for the citizens of Hamilton County. <clears throat> and whereas Hamilton County Public Health and the communities it serves worked throughout the pandemic to bring life-saving vaccinations to locations and people throughout the county where Hamilton County citizens could best be served. And whereas Hamilton County Public Health received tremendous cooperation, volunteerism, and sharing of community resources from the communities it serves. And whereas Hamilton County first responders, citizens, organizations, businesses, officials, and communities are now recognized for their support of vaccination clinics to serve residents while providing open and welcoming access to facilities. Now therefore be it proclaimed that Delhi Senior Center has supported and enhanced Hamilton County Public Health's unprecedented vaccination efforts by partnering to assist and provide critical vaccinations to the citizens of Hamilton County. Be it further proclaimed that the Board of Health of Hamilton County Public Health recognizes Delhi Senior Center for its ongoing support for the health of Hamilton County citizens and for working toward ending the COVID-19 pandemic. It's signed by Mark Rippey, Board of Health President, and Greg Kesterman, Health Commissioner. So again, thank you to all of our employees for the time, the effort, the risk, um, and, and being able to be open and available to them. So thank you for that and go away COVID. All right, um, we'll move on now to our budget presentations. And we first have the police department. <coughs> Before the chief starts to give you some detail on his, um, just to set the <coughs> stage, we have, you each have the binder with, the, you know, proposed uh, appropriations for next year, and it, it gives you the detail on each department's line items, um, the bigger picture for each one, and the little details for each one. I've asked each of the department heads not to dwell on the little details. Most of it is general personnel issues or contracted services. So not to dwell on that, you, you certainly can peruse your binder as much as you need to. But I've asked them to touch on the, the bigger things that they want to point out to you um, to, to keep it more brief and expansive. So any questions, please ask if you hit anything in your binders questions about stuff please ask that that's what we're here for but um yeah so if you would for those that are at home watching this is not the first we've seen this we've actually had this for a while so right. it's not like we're just being introduced to all of this so go ahead Sorry. good explanation thank you thank you board of trustees it's always an honor and pleasure to go through this throughout the throughout the year actually it's always a work in progress and also my command staff chief Braun and joe macaluso and uh, Bill Murphy during the year before he retired and, and Rich Schmoltz and they all have input in it so I appreciate everybody. Um, salaries, um, this budget's based on the 33 sworn that we currently are allotted. Right now we're sin, sitting still at the 31 with the two open positions. Hopefully we'll be filling them in the very near future. Um, as far as the civilian salaries, you'll see in addition with the community advocate position which if passed tonight, that's on the agenda. Um, we'll bring on board Kaylee Vickers in that position. Medical hospitalization, although our premiums have gone down a little bit, which is great, uh, we see a little increase on our end. And that's basically with some family plans changing from single to family plans. 
uh, repairs and maintenance uh, to the building. You'll see $25,000 in there I've allocated. Uh, that may be used, it may not be used as far as <coughs> figuring some of the building for the community advocate position in office space. Uh, contracted services, uh, you'll see uh, we've gone down there, but that's because in 2021 this year we had a large amount from the migration of our legacy RMS to the new Axon. So that's why you see the difference there. We have been given word the communication center is keeping a $5 dispatch fee. So the fee, the amount you see on there is the amount that we'll be paying in our dispatch fees uh, for 2022. Um, I would recommend maybe the township, maybe as a township, sending some to the commissioners for keeping it there because it is truly a savings for us big time. So maybe that's something we consider the first of the year that we could do as a township. Uh, and then operating supplies, you'll see a difference there. Um, basically, we're, we made a change during the year as far as operating this year, operating supplies, uh, where vehicle supplies are coming out of the vehicle. So you'll see a difference. It's just basically allocated from one operating supplies to supply materials, uh, the change there. So that's the difference. Uh, it's just taking it from a different account. So you'll see one counts less this year in the budget, but it's in another, it's in the vehicle supplies. So anything dealing with the vehicles is coming out of that. That's pretty much everything in a nutshell. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about anyone, <coughs> we'll be glad to answer them. Also under contract and services, Pam met and actually is no longer needed out of that. Uh, Chief, I, think I only had a question on two places. One was repairs and maintenance for vehicles. Correct. Is, is this our year to rotate vehicles out? Is that what this is, that we're going from 8,500 to 30,000? No, this actually, that's coming from operating supplies. So if you look at account uh, 323, upper, account 420, you're going to see a decrease in that. Oh, so it's moved to that it's one. Just okay, moved. that's it's, the line you're referring moved. to? Yep. Perfect, just thank you. Yep. So we kind of made that change during this year. Okay, and, and then the second one was on uh, repair and maintenance on your building. I mean, are we going to just try to do patchwork until we... Um, we, have the, we, have the, we have money allocated in there for emergency repairs, but there's an extra 25000 in there for the community advocate if we... Yeah, because this says 40000 mm -hmm. That that one up there is the 25000 Well... 25,000 of that 40,000 is, is for, that? Okay. Yeah, All yeah, right. Thank that's you. included in the 40. That clears yep. it. Thank you. The other is emergency stuff, contract stuff, that HVAC that we have to do maintenance. Okay. Uh, I'm glad you brought up the $5 uh, dispatch fee. Chief, in its, in its day, how much did that get up to? 2195. 2195. So when someone called 911, mm -hmm. it was almost 22 bucks, yep. and we got all the way down to five dollars the dispatch fee. And you can imagine, I'm not going to uh, put you on the spot, but how many would that be in a year? How many calls? Uh, times 22 dollars for every time someone called 911 in Delhi. And look back, and at one time we paid 167 thousand dollars one year for dispatch fees. Yeah. And we were up around the 140 to 160 for years until yeah. we finally got them to break down. And part of the reason why we we're encouraging people to, to call a non-emergency number, you know, 920 you know, during those times. But uh, and I that think that was noticed by them. They realized <laughs> that their numbers are going down. Yeah. They need to do something, or yeah. they're going to lose some customers. So that is quite a savings for, for the residents or the townships. And sometimes that was double for one call when you dispatch fire. Yeah, there was right. the same. We got five more. Just hit call. Yeah. <laughs> then he had Doug's call. That was $44 a yeah. run. And the clock was ticking. Yeah. yeah. That's now we're looking at the Thank you. That's perfect. That's wonderful. Yeah, we should uh, definitely mm -hmm. send something to the commissioners and thank them for that. But uh, hopefully that can sustain yeah. <laughs> nine months. It's two years now, so. Maybe yeah. the new commissioners aren't aware of it, so we shouldn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you. Other questions? No, no. All right, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate thank it. you so much. Appreciate all the work that goes into it. Okay, fire department. Thank you. All right. Um, so we're going to be wrapping up this year. We're, we're looking at 21 closing out about 90% of our expended funds uh, are what we appropriated. So 90% 
I will say for next year's, the, some of the increases we're seeing next year are related to things that we just couldn't bite off this year. It, we were dealing with some cost increase with supplies and things like that. COVID kind of threw things out of the mix. But then also we're getting to the point where we're affected by supply chain issues, so it's getting carried over in 22. But um, so 90% 90, 90 is probably out. we're going to finish out the 21 season. And uh, actually looking good with uh, about 106% on our revenue side. So we're up over what our projected revenues were for 21. So for 2022, um, you know, it, it's really, it, it probably dumbs it down if I said 84% of my costs right off the top is going to be personnel. So I'm beholden to two contracts in that that takes care of my, you know, 36 um, 36 full-time sworn personnel and one civilian, 20 sworn part-time and one civilian. That's a big swath of my costs right off the get-go with personnel costs. So what we're seeing now uh, with our increases encapsulated with the fact that we have a very young department and they're moving through the steps of their contract rather quickly. So that tends to inflate a little bit of the percentage increases that we see but nothing outrageous in terms of our personnel uh, we do anticipate um, we did hire one additional this year in anticipation of two folks leaving i do anticipate one retirement however there are funds in my personnel costs appropriated for multiple retirements just in case so you know that's that's taken into that uh, account as well always remember when when the wages go up it's tied to all the other benefits. I see the same thing, I'm sure that uh, Chief Howard had seen, you know, we're relatively flat with our hospitalization and looking at the, the shared costs, those things kind of work out as well. Um, but as we get more senior staff, the percentage increases from year to year from wages actually does go down a little bit. So as far as the next 13%, it is kind of like what it's taken day to day to run in 2022. Nothing really outrageous. Um, I, I'm happy to report to you because of our cyclic replacement of our apparatus, our fleet maintenance, I can actually start budgeting that down. So our equipment, as we replace it, we're not dealing with the high cost of these older pieces of equipment. We're cycling them out and then not only warranty work is cheap or nothing, you also have newer apparatus. They're easier to maintain. So that's one thing that I've been happy to kind of go on. We don't really get a C deduction. So our fleet, uh, fleet repairs are trading down. Fuel costs are up. Um, communications is also up. My telephone, um, I, I kind of marked that in as cellular data. Our department is, in, is very reliant on technology to go out in the field, generate reports, whether we're doing inspections, patient care reports, and things like that. So our telephone is a bit of an inflated cost. And you're like, why does it cost so much for telephone? Our cellular data, the usage that we use in these remote situations is telling you how much the fire department relies on having this technology out in the field. Um, you caught, utility costs are up a little bit. And uh, again, I'll, I'll kind of point on the contractual services um, our facility maintenance contracts that are built into contractual services there's a slight increase with that but ultimately again we are tied to technology our uh, software and our um, IT records management and reporting are all big ticket items that fall under that contractual services because we utilize those systems so much but what we like to talk about is that three percent those are the things that we can capture in the year that probably are the most eye-opening projects that we can tackle. So uh, we touched on locution. Um, that was one item. I would have liked to have gotten more stations under our belt this year. Unfortunately, just it just did not work out that way. Locution is much more about um, taking advantage of all those technologies that we haven't been able to use in the last 30 years to alert our personnel on the emergency, to make sure that you know, it, it takes into account their health and wellness when they're being alerted to a run. Um, studies on stress with cardiac and things like that, when you introduce a sudden noise and bright lights, what that does to the heart, they're zero to 60. And this system will allow us to control that and give it a more mute environment, give them all the information they need, and then utilizing the technology that's out there. 
to give them visual cues and everything on what runs to go. It will improve our service immensely. So that's one thing that we're looking to tackle, and that will take care of 33s. So 30s this year, 33s next year. Um, we will be outfitting our ambulance and, and engine that are in reserve. I would like to, we, we have the capacity now to possibly roll a fourth ambulance if we needed to, to serve the community. We have the staffing to do it. I don't have all the equipment to do it. I really like to tackle this in, in 2022 to allow the opportunity where if Delhi needs a fourth ambulance called into service, we can get it rolled out there. Because I have the manpower, I just need the equipment. So a lot of my costs are going to tackle that. And again, having a fourth engine when we have events where here in, in Delhi, weather events, things like that, to have a fully equipped engine, if I have the personnel to run it, I just now need the equipment to put on that. So this is gonna definitely improve our service, allow us to kind of spread ourselves out a little bit more and take on a lot of the challenges as our runs increase because they are not going down. Lunar. Lunar, the best way to explain it is, you know, if I if I had a device about this a little bit bigger than a phone, it, it's 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 large. I can look through it and I can see it's a thermal imager and I carry it with me. Not all firefighters on the fire ground can carry a thermal imager. They're flying blind. They're, they're dealing with their experience and things like that. This technology will allow every firefighter in Delhi operating on the, on the ground, fire ground, to be able to see with a thermal imaging camera. It's an insurance policy. Not only can they be tracked, they can be visually located by the device. So if I go down and I'm wearing this device and you have the device, you can see where I'm at. It goes through walls and things like that. And, and it, it will tell you, you know, this is the location that they're at. So very helpful for us to be able to track that on the fire ground. This is going to be a huge advancement on the fire ground for Delhi Township. This is not commonly used. Like I said, we've been looking at this for a long time the opportunity to take advantage of it, I undoubtedly will make our firefighters much, much safer and be able to account for their locations. You know, God forbid, that's why we prepare for these things. So certainly, um, I look to tout this technology when it comes to Delhi because I'm very proud of what this is going to offer us. Structural firefighting? You, oh, I'm sorry. Did that's you all right. Yes. I just want to make for, for clarification point, when we have questions, are we waiting for finish or when we have questions on that part so we don't have to go back? Whatever works. I'll, I'll if we're on the same page, that's great. Which, which do we want to do? Okay. Yeah, I just don't want you to. Yeah, exactly. I don't know who's signing that. On that lunar, I'm just curious: is are we behind the times, or the other jurisdictions around us already have this, or we are well advanced in the times? This technology was just released. It, we knew it was coming, but we we are utilizing. This is an interface that goes with our breathing apparatus. It goes with our radios. Everything is connected. It's, it's a way to connect everybody on the fire ground to what is happening, situational awareness. Those inside the fire ground or inside the house and those outside would all be connected. So we are well in advance of that. Um, yeah, well, I think it's great. Yeah. I'm just curious if, if the others have, no. or will Delhi again be a shining example of what what it should be again yeah. i think if you talk to anybody when they see this technology the fact that we're taking advantage of it now this isn't an early adoption guinea pig it works we're seeing it in the testing that we did we had these devices we used them in the homes that we're tearing down and training in on a rapid run the the firefighters want this this is something that they had their hands on and definitely can right. see the value of it. good uh, one other quick question i'm sorry no, no, if it's on this one go ahead. yeah i was going to say yeah yeah, it, 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 we're take, taking care of our employees. We're taking care of our Absolutely. firefighters, and we're giving them another advantage to work, to run and come home safely. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. No, it's each, all about each them. of these things will mm -hmm. ultimately do better service to Good. the community. Good. But yes, this is their Great this is a key to their safety. And in this competitive world of trying to get firefighters and paramedics and one signed on, we have something like that to offer the safety. Yeah. I think that goes a long way. Yeah. I want to ask you a quick question on. The equipping of a, a fourth possible ambulance, and if you have the equipment for that, and also equipping for an extra uh, engine, does that open us up as far as other mutual aid runs? Because I know that those uh, things have increased mutual aid runs, which is great that we can help our neighbors and they help us. 
But if they see that we've got a fourth squad, does that then send it, it out? It typically works in the reverse. If I've donated a resource to a mutual aid agency, I have that engine or that ambulance to utilize it in and out. That's typically, statistically, what's happening. I, I have the ability to internalize it. I also have the ability to make those not capable of being dispatched anywhere to reserve that for okay. us. That's why I was so curious if you could say that. Easily, yeah. easily, that's well within our operation capacity. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We still have infrared if we're looking for a victim. Or oh, I, we still have we still have the capability. Not everybody has it on them. Um, we have it on so all this, our this companies. Is, this is on our fire personnel. We still have the equipment to find, unfortunately, if we're having to look for a victim. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And they're keyed in. These devices tell you who it is. It, it tells the incident commander how much error they have. It, it is connected above connected. I just can't tell you how far advanced this is to make our job. It's never going to be totally safe, but this will make it safer. We're edging it in, in the favor of our fire department, fire personnel. Chief, if I can, it, it, the lunar you saw earlier as a spend request, and now you see it in the budget, he's buying enough to equip his personnel right now with it. And then he's putting in a request to, to cover the rest of his, I think your SCBAs. That yeah, I, I cannot, I, I can't, this, I can get enough to operate on the fire ground, but if a firefighter shows up on an ambulance to help, it won't be on there until this next year's budget. If it makes sense that we can't predict the situation we're responding in, they could be in an ambulance, a chase vehicle. I want to ensure that when they go grab that breathing device, they have one of these devices attached to it. So that will fulfill that with the 22 button. Yeah. So it's two different actions. It is. It's not the same action. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, without a doubt, you guys hear me preach the cancer prevention. We, we have gone to great lengths in Delhi Township, again, leading edge taking advantage of the technology to make sure that our firefighters, um, every run that they go to of this nature is a hazmat incident, and we know it's killing firefighters. The structural firefighting gear, not only do we outfit everybody with this gear, we're now to the point where if they have a fire, we need to have spare sets, second sets, to get them into while that primary set is being deconned. We don't have that capability. Unfortunately, we're sending firefighters into multiple runs, and they are off-gassing these things. So that it, it, it's, it's no control of ours right now because they only have one set of gear. This budget will allow them to be safer, make the run, and then get them into clean gear while the old stuff is getting deconned. That's just not a capability we have. It is, it is cost-effective to do it this way because essentially I can keep companies available. You don't want me sidelining for personnel and say, you can't make any more fire runs until your gear's cleaned, which will be tomorrow, because you can't throw it in a dryer and it's automatic. So just the logistics of it, that second set, spare set, is what we're trying to cycle up. And this is a huge, huge push in our firefighter safety as well. And then ultimately, uh, without saying 80% of what we do is EMS, we Probably two years ago, I think, I talked to you guys about the power lift cots we got on the grant. Now we're putting them in all of our ambulances. They're, they're a must. They're not a, they're not a want. They're a need. They're, they're definitely going to offset injuries. We bought a Lucas device on the grant, and now it's to the point of we've made runs where we didn't have it, and we needed it. This purchase for 2022 is going to allow us to put a Lucas device on every ambulance. So regardless, every ambulance will have one. And the Indy Lift is a, a bariatric device. If somebody falls, it basically is like a big scoop with a chair. It'll just, at up to 500 pounds, it will pick them up off the floor, get them to our power cots. We will also provide those in all our ambulances. Right now, we have one Lucas device and one Indy Lift for the township. And seeing the need and what it's presented this budget will take care of making sure that every end of the community multiple runs will have access to the same so again that's that's going to go a long way with our health and wellness for firefighters and again I, I believe all these focuses really i know it's three percent of my total budget 
but this is the most of what we've talked about tonight because this makes the biggest impact on what we're going to see in 2022 in terms of difference in services. Any questions on, on those? And then just kind of round, round it up, uh, round it out, our, our TIF allocation for next year is, um, I did receive word from E1, the replacement aerial will be here likely in May, mid-May. So I know I was kind of throwing it out there like, oh, well, this could be after June. It, it looks like uh, it'll go in production sometime in February, and we can expect delivery in May. Um, the old plant will then be put up for auction. We'll be taking the service to the new one. And then also, um, I did have it in my replacement schedule for a new ambulance this next budget cycle. However, we're taking advantage of what's called a, a chassis remount. So essentially, if you guys have seen the ambulance at uh, station 30, you basically take the old van chassis out from underneath the box and you throw a new one underneath it. You keep the same box. So we're gonna take advantage of a remount versus 275, 280 for a new one. This is gonna be about $175,000. It'll be just as good. We're gonna reutilize what we have and then should be able to get it easily another 15 years out of that piece of equipment. So the ambulance at uh, headquarters right now is over 100,000 miles. It's fine. I'd like to get it in reserve so that we can take advantage. And that new remount will also have a power cot and a lift system in it. So we don't have to worry about putting a substitute ambulance in service that doesn't have it. Folks have commented more than enough. If you've got a big one and you got to go get out, get them out of the house, you, you struggle through that whole thing, and then they go to the ambulance, not thinking that they're in the back of the ambulance, and they open the door, and it's the regular cot. It's like, oh. So we're hearing them out. These, this, these budgetary items are more about what's going to take care of the firefighters and community than anything else. Not a lot of bells and whistles. It's kind of neat things, but really taking advantage of the way it works. Any questions? One question on equipment. We have uh, one ambulance that has, for lack of a technical term, the de-germing light. Yes, yes. Are we able to get that in all our ambulances? Not the remounts. Just, it, we, we, we are looking at a way to get that technology in there. Now they make devices that are not attached to the ambulance. You basically mobile. drop, yeah, you drop the, the unit in there and it will do the same thing. We like what it does. It's just not every manufacturer offers it in the capacity. This is an older box, and it doesn't necessarily have the space for that, but it's not that we're not looking to find another option to do that. I just think with COVID and the pandemic and everything else, that you know everything we can do to clean the equipment in an efficient and effective way so that it can get back out on the next run is to our advantage. Thank you for putting a lot of money in caring for your personnel. No, it's just 3%. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you for everything you put into that. IT. IT. Thank you, and good evening, everyone. Um, I'm happy to report that um, new IT initiatives for 2022 is going to be light, like yeah. the previous years. I do have a couple highlights to share. Um, you might remember the Civic Plus new website uh, project that went out this year. That's a five-year contract, so in 2022 we'll be entering the second year, and that cost is just shy of 15000 Years after that, it's going to slowly go down. To when you hit the fifth year in there, it'll be $6,815. But I think that project is going well, and it's a work in progress as always any website is. Um, another contract that we have is a supplemental IT support, which is Bellacore. And we were able to renew a, another three-year contract with them. The services are staying the same and the costs are staying the same. So we have uh, four hours on-site weekly. And all projects are included in anything actually that comes up during the week. Of course, we have the option of increasing that amount if we want more on-site hours. Um, and then we only have one project for hardware. And it's an ESXi project. So what it is, it's a... Um, we have three devices that are ESXi, and they are enterprise class hypervisors that house all of our virtual servers. We have currently 13 virtual servers. These three devices have 
already had extended warranty, so they are reaching end of life in 2022. They are necessary backbone part of our server infrastructure, so we definitely have to replace them. Um, that cost is projected at 40,000. However, that quote was six months ago, and we're not going to actually do this project until after the first quarter. And we have to be able to take advantage of some more discounts. So I, I believe it'll be under 40,000 to replace all three of those. <coughs> but again, that'll be in the first quarter of 2022 that we'll, we'll start that project. Um, other than that, all the other IT costs in the budget are just to maintain what we currently have. Um, other departments will explain their special IT needs, but um, these are the, the ones that I want to highlight for you tonight, unless you have any questions. Much longer, like quicker than Patty, can I ask a question on sure. um, how long have you worked for Dell? Yeah. Most people would have that number right in their head, but I think it's 29 years coming up. 29 years. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. And all the budgets through all those years, and, and I know I've said this before, but how you had the budgets and how they're put together and all the the financial advisory boards, everybody, I mean, you have to feel it like this is good. This is oh, yeah. together, it's organizing. Not that it wasn't then, but using the technology. Oh, yeah, we have so progress. Great. Yeah. Keep on keeping on, another 29, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Patty likes spending everybody's money because all the departments share in her <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I noticed when you bring up like the, what's the name of the program that you just brought up? Yeah. The TA? Yes, yeah. I brought a smile to your face, and I'm thinking she knows all about this, and we're just kind of like going well, with it. Well, I was waiting for one of you to say, what does it stand for? But Thank you. Took, took I just did. I was you like, you know? said it, but you, yeah. Because I didn't really know either. I just say ESXI. It is, it was named after the, originally named after the Apache Software Foundation, and they were the first one to do this. And they developed it, which was Elastic Sky X. I knew it. And I just <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. That's it. That's Thanks. Yeah, okay. that's good. Thank hey, you for all your research and everything making things run for everyone. I'm sure they're all out there very appreciative that you have them run and smell. Oh, thank you. She does a different type of 911. Yes, she does. <laughs> yes, she does. Yeah. I can't get on. I, my computer just crashed. Someone just dropped their laptop. You hear it all, Patty, don't you? Yeah, it is. But it's, it's ever-changing. That's what makes it fun. Every day different. Patty, what do you see in 2023, 2024? So, yeah, so in 2023 and 2024, that's when the PC replacement project is starting all over again. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think I have anything else in 2023 other than that. I'm going to have my list here. Hold on. Okay, so the other thing for 2023 will be, uh, remember the Meraki switches? Those are all paid off. But then you have a renewal for just the um, online program that maintains it, that helps me manage it. Uh, that will come due in 2023. 2024 is just the PC replacements, that second half of them. And then 2025, we start back with the uh, backup systems and making sure that those are still running or they might be needing for replacement in 2025. Hopefully, we'll have the chip issue resolved by the time we need our laptops. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> they sure better. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Patty, again. Thank all you for right. all you do for so many. You're welcome. Right. Thank you, trustees. Um, let's see, I would like to take a second and uh, thank the FAB too. I know we met with them two or three times in the past year, kind of going over stuff. Del High residents always asking a lot of questions. Um, let's see. I'd like to start out talking about, um, I guess, the road project. Um, out of our four accounts, each uh, account has contracted services, a line item dedicated for paving. And this year you will see a significant decrease due to we were going to hold off in 2022 and do a bigger project all in one area for 2023. Um, a few reasons why we were going to do that and uh, fund balances were getting a little bit on the low we just did a um, really big paving project in Mount Vernon as you know um, and then although we did uh, get a large grant through the SORTA program we uh, did have to pay over about 150000 just an estimated cost of uh, engineering and surveying for that project 
Um, we could split up the road project for 2022, but we have a lot of streets in that area. You always get better pricing, the bigger project. And as you know, we always try to keep our road project in one place if we can. Um, I know the contractors like it, like it and uh, that's how we get better pricing on it. So that's the plan. Um, we did talk with Jack and we had a designated amount of TIF that we were gonna not use in 2022 and then carry over to 2023 to help with that project. Um, any questions on that? It'll make uh, the residents happier in that area that they're not inconvenienced. Two years in a row. That's a good point. In a row. Yes. Yeah. Um, motor vehicle license tax. Um, it actually only has two line items in that account. So, um, uh, for the road project, which would be contracted services, obviously nothing's coming out of that account or that line item. And then the only other expense in that account is insurance. So moving on to gasoline. Um, engineering and surveying on a highly requested and missing sidewalks throughout the township to improve safety and accessibility. Um, this does not have anything to do with the sort of grant. This is something we've been collecting complaints on for years. I know zoning has collected plenty and we have to try to knock out uh, certain small sections of sidewalk that's missing. Um, some spots might we might not be able to, but we're going to try and obviously prioritize and work on the ones that we have more requests for. Um, let's see, salt, we increased it by 30000 um, to 100000 In 2021, we budgeted 70000 and for quite a few years, I budgeted 70000 and it worked out great. Um, last year, we do share the dome with Hamilton County, and although they had plenty of salt, they weren't able to get it. So we had to step up and order salt. We were able to get it. Uh, they just filled up the dome. So I don't know. I guess I got a little scared. So I put a little more in there and uh, hopefully it will scare the snow away and not use it. That's the plan. Um, equipment upgrades, um, just replacing a Ford Scape and an asphalt roller. Um, we usually try to replace some kind of equipment every year. And then in the gasoline fund, we did do something similar to the police, just not as high of amounts as them. We did a little bit of fund cleanup. We worked with the assistant mm -hmm. administrator, Greg, along on that, um, cleaned up some accounts, just make it easier. Any questions on the gasoline fund? Yes, I do have one. County street sweeping. <laughs> yes. What's that? That would be doing the main Delhi Pike corridor. Probably we're looking at twice a year and see how that goes. Um, it would be mostly just on the curb. Um, so do we have street cleaning equipment? We do not. So that would we be, would rent it from them? Or? It would be subcontracted out. And then we would probably help out with some of the weeds and, and maybe blowing off some of the sidewalk and in the streets we've worked on by. So it's it, a chair of so. like, like more or less business. Correct. Like you said, the main okay. corridor, which so is where we typically get our complaints. We really don't get too many other ones. Plus, there's a lot of more walkers in that area also. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for gasoline? Um, road and bridge fund. Um, Clarever Paving with Cincinnati Waterworks, uh, we budgeted 150000 uh, This is taking advantage of existing current competitive bidding that uh, the Cincinnati of City Waterworks already put out. The project is currently taking place now, replacing water mains on, uh, let's see, the area, I think you're familiar, they've had the road closed, Fair, Leith, um, Samoth Ridge, there's quite a few streets, it's a pretty decent sized project. Um, the contractor is only required to pave the lane that they disturbed. So we're kind of taking advantage and then picking up the other lane, which is a minimal amount and we're getting a lot paid in, in one year. So we're pretty happy about that. Um, that is all I have for Road and Bridge. Any questions? Anybody say anything in that fund? Mm -hmm. Answer my question. 
Um, motor vehicle permissive tax. Um, we have the building maintenance salt dome roof for the um, for the, for the salt dome roof replacement, and then uh, gutters on the public works building. Each one, or we estimate at fifty thousand. Uh, just about every year, every year we budget something to improve our building to, to try to keep it in good shape. And just an FYI, the county does pay over twenty percent of expenses and repairs since we do share the facility with them. So it works out pretty good. That was my question. Don't you share it with them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I they usually want to know ahead of time if we do a major project, so we'll send it to them after, usually after this gets approved to make sure everything's okay. Um, anything in motor vehicle permissive? Ron, do you remember what we had last year? And why it was so much higher? Because I think here the dates before we got like 77,000 contract services. It would be we didn't put into the road project. Okay. Yes, exactly. We. Uh, I think one fund we budgeted fifty thousand. That's to uh, uh, install a curb where we have a water problem area, but that's all we budgeted, you know, for the most part on a big project like that. But yeah, you'll you'll see some decrease, and we're going to build our thumbs up and pay pretty big in twenty twenty three. Okay, touching base with Tiff just for a second. Um, Public Works is. Uh, 325,000 designated for two dump trucks. Um, we, uh, we've had this in a TIF budget for quite a few years. Um, currently working on specs for it. We hope to order it in January, but the way everything's going, I don't know if we're gonna see it till 2023. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be here next winter or not. Uh, we hope to, but if not, we'll, uh, we'll make it work. Um, these two trucks will be non-CDL. Um, drivers get a little harder to come by, so we're gonna we're gonna do two out of five uh, non-CDL and see how that goes as a plan. So you use those mode for snow removal and things like that. Um, we still rotate them out in the summer and stuff. You know. um, a lot of jurisdictions are doing that. There's a lot to keep up with CDL, and so this will open some more doors for drivers. That's the plan. And then, as mentioned with Tiff, um, uh, carrying that money over to make a, a bigger fund balance in Tiff and then our funds for 2023. Come on, we're still short on CDL drivers. I know we were. Um, you can never have enough, depending on the winter. <laughs> if it snows for a few days, we pretty much, you know, the park helps us. Um, Jack offered his services. Um, <laughs> Mose, with, a with a shovel. With a shovel. Well, we're doing okay. We'll, we'll make do. Well, we're glad you're getting non CDL. Interesting story. That when we go to the Ohio Trustee Association mm -hmm. meeting, if it snows, small townships, their trustees yeah. get up and leave because they're the ones that drive the truck. So we might have something in the future put on our resume. <laughs> Which they, they have in February, so I, I think I've gone once or twice, and it's scary. I don't like leaving it down. So, well, that's all I have. You, unless you have any other questions. Nope. Nope. Another right. good job. Thank you. Thank you. All right, community development. Well, I keep you guys entertained all year long with something on the agenda. So I don't even have a slide roll to mind except this. Um, <laughs> our budget is actually gone down this year, um, proposed, uh, partly because of my position being this first who shared services. We're also not looking at doing any major projects this year in community development. Last year we did um, a grant application. We had some money we threw in, hoping we'd get a grant to match it, which we did get that grant for the feasibility study on Delphi Pike. Um, looking ahead at 2023, I would, and I know we've had this conversation last year, and it will be a major expense. I would like to kind of put on the radar at looking at doing a land use comprehensive plan for the township since we don't have one, and we've been getting so many recent rezoning requests coming in with all the development. So it may be something to look at in 2023 um, because we'll have plenty of projects coming up in another department, which I'm partly of, and uh, we'll go over that one next. But if you have any questions about anything community development, like I said, everything's pre-status quo. 
and it actually went down from last year. How much was the grant for the feasibility study on the pike, and what would that cover? What, what's that for? Yeah, we, we got $15,000 um, last year for the grant. Um, it's to basically do a, a study of the Delhi pike, primarily between Greenwell and the Anderson Ferry, to look at traffic signals, um, ingress and egress, just the whole traffic patterns, partly to tie into our project at Delhi Town Square. Because awesome. we do need some, some things looked at. Um, then we'll do some minor streetscape recommendations, but as we know, we have to get that approved through the county at a later date. Mm -hmm. I told you this one was easy. I keep you entertained every, every other meeting. So yeah, you're exactly. Regaling us. Yeah. Okay, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Parks, and I actually brought out of <laughs> I brought out tonight Randy to, to kind of tag team with me tonight. Um, Randy is the director of Parks Operations. Um, he is on the ground, more in the detail of everything going on in the park. So um, we wanted to see his lovely face tonight. So I asked him to come out and join us tonight. Um, some of the major things you're going to see, and I will tell you this right now, so get your pens out. Um, we have made some last minute changes on our budget proposal. Okay. Um, the new budget, budget proposal will be $1,119,400. I'll hit some of those numbers as we're going through this. Um, primarily, and it's just a few items, we actually just added a little more money to them. Um, so I'll hit those. Um, if you look through the budget thing, I did make some corrections I found um, last minute. There were some um, account numbers that were wrong that I fixed in there. So we'll get those fixed for the uh, final, final budget. But some of the things you're going to look at are going to be some upgrade to our door locks here at the Senior Center and um, at the lodge, or here at the lodge and also at the Senior Center. These locks are about 12 to 15 years old. They're not always working quite well. So we were looking at just, they replaced them all at one time back then. We're looking to replace them all again right now just to make these buildings a little more secure than what they are. Um, also here at the lodge, the condenser back in the walk-in cooler likes to go out. We do store all of our um, beverages in there, um, especially during the summertime for our events. So we need to get that fixed this year. It's just kind of lighting along here and it's it's still going, but we don't know how much longer. So we're asking for a little money to help fix that. Greg, while you're on doors, sure. what's the story with the door at the Senior Center? Because last night we had a tough time getting it open. The exterior door. The exterior door? Uh, the one to the left, the the main one, the main, the main door. slider door. Yeah, you had to physically switch. Oh, really? Yeah. There's a switch up on top. Yeah, you have to turn switch, on and off. Switch the electric isn't on, and then oh, it'll release. No one knew that. Oh. Yeah. And so we, so we force the door open. We don't have to break it. Right. Right. The police didn't show up here. So yeah. We're good. We had a combination once we got in there. There you go. Um, some of our other expenses we're looking at adding on. This will be a five. We're adding one more item to this um, under operating supplies. Um, we already had the time blocks for the park restrooms in there. Um, this will help us uh, basically better secure our parks in the evening um, so we don't have to have people coming in and unlocking, locking everything up. So we're looking at putting some locks on the restrooms here in the park. The item we're looking at adding is replacement of tables here in the lodge and also the senior center. Um, they're falling apart, just some opening and closing, just used over the years. Um, so we're gonna, we'd like to add $5,000 to that um, as an additional line item. So that'll bring that total account up to 40000 from the 35000 it is. The tables we're looking at will match the existing tables that are already in place, um, so there will not be any height differential differences in, in widths either. So. Um, some other things we have under small tools and minor equipment. This is another added item that we kind of forgot to put in the original budget that you have in front of you. Um, as you're standing or sitting in here tonight, you hear a radio station going on, which we had going on last night too. Um, we're looking at doing audio and video improvements um, to, the senior, or to the senior center. So we don't have issues over there. So we're looking at adding some things in there. Um, in the long run, but we got to get the items fixed in here too. So we're, we don't want to have long ongoing item issues at both locations. So this will be a yeah. No, this will actually be at the senior center. Um, this will be a six thousand dollar item add on. So this will bring the um, account up to thirty thousand dollars. It was twenty four thousand. So that was a request we had when we had the issue that made us come over here. So yeah. If there's anything we can do with leftover, we'll try to move some money around and maybe do some improvements in here too. So, um, 
The other issue, this is the big account that we're looking at, um, is improvement of sites. Um, this is where the big projects are going to be that we're proposing, <laughs> which will probably be the biggest discussion tonight. Um, one is the paving of Storywoods Trail and the lodge for resurfacing. Um, we may have to look at the lodge for resurfacing to maybe move it next year, but I'm not sure. We'll just play it out by year right now. It is a grant that we got from the county, depending on how much we have to use the space and time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So we may need to look at that. We'll keep it in the budget for this year. Um, but between the two, it is about a $75,000 in grants we'll be getting. So it's a reimbursement. The county is not directly paying contractors anymore. So we have to um, allocate the money and then we'll pay the contractor and then they'll reimburse us back. Similar to what we did with the playground that we got $150,000 back on. Excuse me, with that being said, does that grant have to be spent by a certain time period? It's, it's a three-year grant or one year or two. We actually, with the playground, requested that we move that funding back a year and they were cooperative with us on that. So, if we have to. Okay. So, um, the other projects we're looking at is an add on at the stage. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, we uh, we noticed that with the stage, the, uh, the bands that are showing up, uh, they use the full space of the stage. So, the equipment is kind of in their way. So, we are going to add concrete in the front and around the sides for their speakers, lighting. So they can utilize the whole space under the stage itself and then everything is going to be on the sides so that's just a little added feature that we we decided to do after the fact and realized that we needed so, so that's a four thousand dollar request um the big projects we're looking at um in your packet you have for the pickleball courts um sixty thousand dollars we would like to raise that to a hundred thousand dollars um just for cost, we've had some we've had some difficulty getting good quotes in and cost estimates. So we just want to be on the safe side. Um, if we do this project, we're hopefully looking at doing it over here near the tennis courts, tennis ball courts right now. Um, but if there's another location that will deem better, we'll definitely look at that. How many how many courts were there? Um, this could this could put in between two to three additional. This is additional stock on top of the tennis. Exactly. Court. This would be additional. brand separate. Yeah, separate courts. These things aren't cheap. No, no. <laughs> I saw in the paper there's an eight million dollar project going in Hollywood right now. So for pickup bar courts, yeah, it's yeah. that much. We have to do that. One has a, a lot of bars. <laughs> oh, that's got a bar. That's why. Oh, it's got a bar. Bar. Yeah. yeah. It's PLK project mm -hmm. in, in yeah. Norwood. It's an eight million dollar indoor outdoor bar. Somebody's doing it yeah. along with them. First of its kind. So if you want us to go grander than this, we're more than happy to. We're just where we're start. We're proposing right now. So um, the other item is the dog park. Originally had a forty thousand dollar request. We'd like to raise that to fifty, just to be on the safe side for a larger park if we need to do that, or if we want to end up putting some of the forever long turf that we recently re recently realized you can get for dog parks out too. So um, so we don't have to have brown spots. And, that one's the location okay. correct for the floral paradise or no? That's we have some um, proposals which actually put it closer to the lake over here, um, but we're open to other locations also. There's really no definitive, but we have some renderings of various types of dog parks. You don't want to just put fencing up, you also want to put amenities inside of it, including water, some obstacle things for the dogs. Um, they're not just chasing each other, but they're actually going. But they'll be chasing ducks if you're next to Well, that may be the next thing we need. Maybe we need a wireless fence around the pond and, uh, and get rid of the ducks that way. It's for the moms and dads. Yeah, so, yeah. And we also have an additional 21000 in this, in this um, account just to be on the safe side. In case we're short on something, we can always um, possibly move some money around. So this account would go from $200,000 to two hundred fifty dollars is what we're asking. So if you guys are willing to do that for us. And those are pretty much the big expenses that we're um, looking at for this year, or for next year. Um, with the TIF, we do have a request for a truck. Um, Randy was originally looking at buying some smaller equipment, but we've been in discussions with the Public Works Department about maybe doing some automobile swaps. We have a very old Impala that is just not really functionable for the Parks Department. Um, we're looking to possibly taking over their escape and then um, buying ourselves another F-150. Um, so just kind of have things we can haul things in. It's kind of hard to haul car or things in a Impala that I frankly don't even fit in, to be honest with you. And it's very old, so but that's what we're looking at for 2023. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, the question I have is 
about the uh, dog park and the uh, pickleball, and that's been answered. So that that's a good thing. But I would also like to know if we're going to have a plan to use some money to repair Floral Paradise Gardens. That that's also was kind of thrown. That greenhouse falls on someone. Yeah, that was also kind of thrown under the twenty-one thousand dollars. We were partnering with someone, still working with them, that they were okay. able to donate yeah. the equipment. We're hoping that still comes through, um, but otherwise we have some money in there to help with that if we need to do it. All right, and the green corner, is that going to be under parks, or are you going to take that under administration? <laughs> I am going to let Jack have that. Okay, just making sure it's Somewhere. on someone's budget. Somewhere. Somewhere. Um, and just one quick thing. Under, uh, obviously, in the pickleball, you're talking two or three, and at all park, you know, we can get by doing this. You know, this is a time that, that if we're going to do it, let's do it nice. You know, not something while well, we have a we have a token pickleball court, and here's this, or the two tennis courts, which are just nasty. I'm sorry, they are. You know, uh, two or three, or maybe three or four, so that well, yeah, they got this no pickleball. You can never get up there, so that's why we go everywhere else. I mean, the goal is, in fact, you know, I just saw this the other day on uh, somebody sent a copy on the next door. You know, Delhi doesn't bring people together. It's not fun. To, that's what we're doing, and that's what the next two, three years are all about: supporting our businesses, giving residents choices to do things right here in the township. So let's make it nice and let's increase it. If you have to increase it some, I'd rather do it now than think, you know. And I want to take another hundred thousand if you'd like to give it to us. And even the dog park, I mean, we've heard that from several. But to make it a nice, you know, yeah. so where it's like, wow, Delhi's really got some nice things there. So I would invite you to revisit that and. and uh, I guess what would your recommendation be on the number of pickleball courts? I think so you need at least four. Okay. Yeah. And if you look at the other uh, developments that are going on around down at. You know, the uh, or landing downtown, these other places that are doing them, Green Township, you know, there, there's several there. And so, um, and I know they're costly and things, but you know, like I said, if we do it, we are going to do it, let's do it right. I think another cry of woe that we've heard recently too, Mike, is that we've done a lot, and great, I mean, we've done a great job with presenting things for our kids, the playgrounds and so on. <coughs> But we've always been a park for everybody that lives in this community. So it's time to expand those things of interest, so to speak, by doing a pickleball, which seems to be an attractive senior piece. And also, the dog park is a family thing, because you see families walking their dogs. And we've always been so proud of the fact that our parks, you know, had something for everybody. And I think right now we're kind of, we're a little lopsided on the child side. So let's, let's bring it back into a good balance. We will post some numbers in for the next period. Do we'll I? We'll post some numbers in for the next period for you guys, so. Okay. Yes. Sounds good. Yes. So we my question about tonight. the dog park, and I kind of share Mike's sentiments about all the ducks by the dog park. Um, you know, they will be chasing these little, little ducks around. And aren't there a lot of memorial trees over there? <coughs> that they have to be or place somewhere else? I, I'm, I'm just trying to do a visual. There's, there's a few trees over there. They aren't set for memorials just okay. yet. There's a few in there, but they can be replaced and moved around. That isn't the only location for the dog park. There might be three to four different okay. locations. Okay, so, so yeah. you'd like to maybe over that big area by Floral Paradise? Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's another yeah. one. That's got a restroom. Yeah. It's got good parking. Yeah. There's options for there's locations. Okay. We just, so that's not set. Yeah, so none none of this is set. Yeah. And even the pickleball course could possibly right. be in a better location. Yeah, you need four. four. Mm -hmm. You're not be room here. Exactly. Four. Okay. Thank you. I we would, love I your would, ideas. You listen to us. I would suggest, since you're looking to elevate a few things, that we probably start and bring somebody in that does this for a living and can help us with some planning efforts so we're not guessing on some of these things because I don't know I can say what I assume but I, I think if we want to do some things we we probably need to bring an expert in to help us do some planning like okay. where would be the best place for the pickleball courts dog park you know that kind of thing um, if we want to do it right I think we need to start there yes, I did have that one meeting with a quote pickleball expert and brought that information with dimensions and so on in. I don't, do you still have it? I, I think I still yeah, have a copy I, of it. I'm talking about like a planning, somebody that plans park facilities, you know, I, I get a little concerned that everything's just here. Yeah. Right, they, like, they, like, they like instead of maybe it should be there, maybe the dog park, you know, that's uh, just something like that. We're looking to expend some money, right. probably spend some 
the less sure. money up front and make sure we're doing it in the most opportune places. And also give a good flow of activity to the park. You know, jump here, jump there, let's go sure the flow of activity. We like space. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's almost like Christmas and we're Santa Claus. It's Christmas socks, actually. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Human resources, Mr. Cameron. So I'll go into some of these things. Miss uh, Mrs. Harvey's was is off to Disney World. Hopefully she made it okay. Her flight was at 7 a.m., so she got to traverse northern Kentucky at the wrong time. Um, so I'll, I'll fill in her little tiny shoes. Um, <laughs> And before I did that, I, I did want to say a few things just regarding your, your process of appropriating. And we talk about budget, we talk about appropriations. You, you appropriate the money, which means you put it in place for, for us to spend on things. Um, it's, budget is same, means the same thing when we say those, those words. And each fund, we're fund accounting, which I won't go into a full explanation of, but each fund has so much certified by the county, the, auditor, the the budget commission, that each fund can appropriate up to. So you, you have your eye on that when you look at these numbers, so just so people understand the process. So you know, police has their own fund and dollars, fire fund and dollars part. So when Ron mentions he's got four different funds, he's got a couple different license tax, gas tax, and road and bridge fund. Um, so just so, folks understand how and when we talk this vernacular what's going on um, so just the tax budget you do in July sets the stage for what we estimate is available for this year and um, that's what you can appropriate so I didn't want to lose sight of some of that overall thing um, I'll start with revenue just a quick look at revenue and <coughs> The direct comparisons are a little tough with our numbers because as Greg mentioned, you know, some of the expense he's gonna have is for grant money he's gonna have to receive in, so that's revenue and expense. If we transfer money from the general fund or from the TIF, that's counted as revenue in that other fund and it's counted as expense twice. So it gets a little weird to compare the numbers directly and fund the county. So I, I thought I would put the revenue for, for this year is Twenty-five million five hundred sixteen thousand. Last year at this time it was twenty-four million four hundred twenty-nine thousand. There's reasons for that. Take out the the CARES money that we got last year for COVID relief and the ARP money, um, American Recovery Plan, and it's it's very similar. So our revenue looks good. As, as Chief Campbell mentioned, he was up a little bit. Uh, I'll show you the TIF here soon. Um, overall, the appropriation. Now, we've, what we've mentioned tonight will change the number some, but what we what you had in your binder to look at initially was a $24 million overall appropriation request. Um, Ms. Hermes left me with some information. There's a bigger spreadsheet that backs these numbers up, but I'll give you the, the highlight. Um, overall, personnel costs are just a little over 1% increase um, comparing to last year. Administration, 1.95, fire, 5.31. This is with medical, so it's, it's salary, medical, it's all the things that come in with, you know, police, fire, pension, or fire, pension, PERS, and that kind of thing. So fire's down 5.31, parks is relatively flat, police is up 5%, public works, rounding up 12.8%. Greg's down, zoning is down 11.3%. Some of that is the fact that Greg's salary came out of zoning and, and went into public works a little bit. And parks, similar, we don't have that director salary sitting there like we did before. So our, our, our medical um, health care cost was down a little over a percent, so that was good. But then you have similar personnel levels and salary costs go up, so it, it's typically a trend up a little bit. But that's a little over 1% is not, not bad. Um, so the general fund and um, township grounds and halls don't have a lot of notes in those. There's not anything tremendous going on in those 
funds, if you had any questions in regard to the, the general and the, the 120 funds, please have at it. I think the bulk of conversation, so the TIF, um, you've heard a few things from folks. I'm going to jump down to this real quick. Um, we're up 23% in the TIF fund in, in the last five years. I didn't add 22 yet. Um, that's pretty good. It keeps it keeps going up. It keeps we keep grabbing. There's more money. So the tip for those who aren't familiar, and I'm I'm sure I'm going to explain it poorly. It's it's new development that's in the tip district, and we have 1,400 that Greg has to file new new certifications for. Um, it's if like with Greenside Estates, which is the own part three, that valuation is let's say. $100,000 and now it's $500,000, well that $400,000 increase all goes into the TIF fund. It's a capital It's a capital fund that we're, we're able to use on different capital things. It's a little bit older of a TIF fund, so it's, it's more flexible and allows us to do a few more things. But it's up 23% and I have roughly estimated in your in your big spreadsheet that we're going to collect 5.5 million. Well, we were at almost 5.7, so I would assume we're going to be there and beyond, but I didn't want to. I'm being conservative. So you can see what the numbers look like being conservative. <clears throat> so the TIF looks healthy and it looks like it'll continue to grow with some of the newer developments going on. Um, so this, this year, and you have your big um, colorful spreadsheet <clears throat> and we track all these things so you can refer to that that's a pretty good tracking tool and the bottom line shows you what the balance is I, a couple things I added the two million that we talked about earlier with that one resolution in 21 so you can see on on the spreadsheet that was handed out tonight what the balance looks like um, that money is I'm gonna have to take money out of the tip for the project and it's not all it's not all able to be the bonds. So there's some TIF money I have to pull out. Um, and so that's that's part of that. The bond payment will be $135,000 um, for 2022. There might be some more things that, as I dissect the, the current pricing that I have to ask you to do or, or do, but just bear with me, it's all happening recently. Um, the fire chief mentioned his equipment, so I won't I won't belabor that. <clears throat> uh, the truck for the parks runs, dump trucks. They're not cheap. Um, the police vehicles. I do want to touch on that briefly because that's a little bit of a, a shift. Um, the past few years, the police have taken some amount out of their fund, and then a bigger amount out of the tip then they receded the revenue from the sale into the police fund. So I i don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, but we're just going to simplify it, take it all out of the TIF and receive the money for the sale into the TIF. So rather than complicate the matter. So I'm, that is shifting for 2022. Um, I say that, and actually we'd like to to do that this year because they need a purchase order to go against the vehicles to order them. So you, it won't be a next year's budget if I do it this year, it'll be in this year. But the money's there so that's not a problem and they need a purchase order to order the vehicles. So it's a shift in how that'll be budgeted, but it's we're gonna do it this year so we can give them a purchase order. And that's the 190? Yeah, unless you have an issue with that. That's part of the 190. There's, there's equipment that'll come after the fact next year. The yeah, the outfit. <clears throat> um, the only remaining piece out of the TIF, I mean, we have we have school payments so that the schools get their portion from the TIFs. That's all part of this. There's there's the fees to the auditor. We have some existing debt. Um, our our six hundred thousand dollar for the Neve Road Firehouse came comes off this year, so that's finished paying this year. Uh, so that's that's opens up so Billy. So the last thing, <clears throat> you mentioned the, the corner of Anderson Ferry and Delhi Pike. The Grand Corner. 
Well, the green corn, it's got several names. Uh, I was wondering well, what you were talking about. The Hallmark about. corn. Yes. The Hallmark corn. <laughs> Not me, that wasn't my name. I won't point at Ron for saying that. But, um, yes. So, be, pre previously we talked about a gateway entry sign, kind of a, 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 a signification that you're hitting down high or hitting, hitting a nice area. It, what I have projected is 100,000. That is for uh, an LED sign that's two sided, so it would be potentially in a V shape you know, certain height, size, based on how big it should be from visibility standpoint with some, certainly landscaping, some stonework or brickwork. Um, there's gonna have to be engineering architecture that goes with this, but that's, that's. I'm gonna say you're gonna be in $100,000 range when you're done. So that's- so We're gonna do some permanent landscaping that's can also be utilized for holiday celebration? I want to, you know, I think, yes, absolutely. I mean, I, what, what I would love to see is that we're, we're putting it together so we could decorate it several times a year, you know, whatever that looks like, whether it's Easter or my birthday or Christmas or July 4th. <laughs> but I would, I would have that in mind that what we put out there, we can, jazz up but now remember there's going to be reader boards so you don't want to overtake that but yes absolutely i would i would think that's what we have in mind when we design and you you would see whatever the design is and however we want to orient that corner and what little things we want to put out there I'm not getting into the weeds on that but who's going to actually be doing the quote decorate i Pat, we kind of thought the first person to ask about it could. <laughs> no, I, Sarah, I would say no, we... I'm just saying, I think that that might be an opportunity that we could ask for some of the very crafty design people in Delhi Township to volunteer and, you know, bring some ideas and make it more of a community involvement piece than just us decorating the corner. I think that's, I think a lot of people would appreciate the opportunity to participate maybe wrong but from what we're hearing from what we see on the our friends social media um i think we have some good people around here that are pretty crafty so just a thought and i'm sure with a hundred thousand dollars they can come up with something <laughs> I think the sign is going to be expensive. Yeah. I think Ron did a great job. Ron? Yeah. Ron? Yeah. Yeah. Ron? Yeah. Ron? Yeah. Ron? 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 That's the generous community that we live in here, and uh, so, and there are those that come from that background, and you know, but there's some that probably have some really cool displays they'd love to see, just you know, to donate to the township during that time. But I think the sign is huge. I think it's 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 exactly what that area needs. It's just something a point of contact for our residents, right at the corner of Dyne and Anderson Ferry. Obviously, we'd watch how much we put on that scrolling thing. We'll have everyone sit at the green lights so we'll trying to follow the signs and look how pretty those decorations are. So, um, so, but I think it's good. It's all good. Good, good, good. That's all good. Yeah. I think it's all good. You think it's all good? All good. Forward, forward, hoe. Forward, ho. Let's see, forward, ho. She brought up big ends. And what else was on the agenda there? <laughs> Around Hallmark Corner. Yeah, that's right. Hallmark Corner. We can show them movies. Yes, we learned so much. <laughs> All right, so I've, I've written down any notes, and, and each department will make whatever adjustments, and we'll float back out the final. So what you would see on the 21st is that version with these adjustments to it. Um, so hopefully there's... It, it, but if you have any questions or there's something that comes up, for that or when you see another final if the final draft please okay. feedback questions Are you boss? For today? no I'm, I'm good thank you thank you all the department heads and your department everybody involved in getting these 
numerous numbers together for us. Jack, thank you for summarizing for us in a very legible and uh, easy to understand. I, I appreciate it. I'm sure the public trustee do. Okay. Well, let's move on with our departments. Chief, fire department, still no agenda items tonight? All right. Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. No? We're going to go with our recommendation. <laughs> okay. A motion to accept the seasonal resignation. Louis J. I. Jr. of the Parks and Recreation Department, effective November 15, 2021. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 The motion carries. Motion to accept the seasonal resignation of Elizabeth A. Rosheimer, the Parks and Recreation Department, effective November 13, 2021. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 The motion carries. Just for the general public. Okay. Yeah, I have a few, one thing to say. Yeah. Since there is no slide tonight, but there is the community holiday market this weekend on Saturday from 9 to 2 at the Senior Center. Yeah. Okay. Great. Sorry for that. No, that's fine. Thank you. Um, but again, for, for general public, the two resignations tonight um, are seasonal. I mean, they, they, they get hired if they want to come back in the spring, and then uh, they resign in the winter. And so. You, you, as a board, you have to functionally accept their resignation for the for right. my state law. That's just yes. the, what you have to do. Right, and okay. hire them again. They hire them again. Yeah, hire. That's right. Perfect. Okay, police department. Exciting times. <clears throat> Motion to approve the hiring of Kaylee Ann Vickers as a community advocate in the police department at fifty two fifty two thousand dollars per year. Effective December 9th, 2020. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Welcome, Kaylee. Chief. Thank you, Board of Trustees. I'd just like to mention uh, <clears throat> this has been, as you know, a um, process for a while that we've been wanting to do this. So we're excited about it. Uh, when we put it out, we received a lot of uh, applications, went through the process, had a lot of uh, qualify candidates, but we're very excited to bring Kaylee Vickers on board. Um, I'll let Kaylee come up and introduce herself, but she's not going to tell a lot about herself probably, so I'll go ahead and give you a few things. <laughs> she comes to us from Volunteers of America. Um, she's also a woman helping women divert advocate, which is domestic violence emergency response team. So we're one of the first in, in the uh, county to go with the divert team actually in the suburbs after the city instituted it with women helping women. So we've been uh, having divert agents come out on domestic violence calls um, for a couple years now. Well, she's one of those that has gone out into the suburbs and in the city as a divert advocate, and we're going to allow her to continue doing that after hours from working with the township. So uh, that's one thing that was near and dear to her. That wasn't a deal breaker for us to not allow her to come on board with us. So she's going to continue doing that. She's originally from Delta, Ohio. Uh, which she can explain where that is, it's up north. Uh, graduated from Liberty Center High School. She's got a bachelor's of science degree from Xavier University in criminal justice with a focus in criminalistics. So I did ask her if she's interested in being a police officer and she didn't quite want to go that route. Didn't jump on it. <laughs> yeah, didn't jump on it. Uh, maybe there's always time to do that. But she's also got a master's degree from University of Cincinnati and criminal justice with a focus on corrections and behavioral analysis. So that benefits her. And she's also working on a second master's degree, expected graduation of 2023 in social work from the University of Cincinnati. So she's certainly qualified for this position. Um, it's probably gonna be one of those things that we gotta make sure we don't overwork her, you know, but what I like about her is she's self-motivated. She understands the position, this is new to us. Uh, she can make this the position that she wants it to be also working in conjunction closely with the police officers um, And I know we all look forward to bringing her on board and start. She actually will be starting December 30th So one of the last days of the year because the 31st is a holiday and then she'll come back on the 4th Hit the ground running. Uh, we got a lot of work to do. She understands that but there's no doubt in my mind She's self-motivated and we're gonna get things done um, and I'd like to mention too, although it's from the police department, she's under the police department, you know, I see all departments utilizing her. Uh, there's no reason why it's just within the police department. 
there might be zoning issues or nuisance issues that you know families can't take care of uh, might be an elderly person who's having a hard time getting the grass cut or whatever you know, all departments can utilize Kayla and we look forward to that are you going to bring her up sure Kayla if you'd like to introduce yourself they don't want to listen to me oh no no good evening i'm Kaylee Vickers um i'm from Liberty Center, Ohio, Dallas, Ohio. It's a very, very small place, about 30, 40 miles west of Toledo. Um, it's like such a small town, there's not even any stoplights there. I went to the same school from the time I was in kindergarten to I graduated high school. So um, after I graduated, I really wanted to move to the big city, so I came to Cincinnati. I went to Xavier after I graduated. Uh, I decided I wanted to get a master's degree, so I went to the University of Cincinnati. Um, for the last eight years, I've worked throughout the social service industry. Um, doing a little bit of everything. Most recently, um, I work for the Volunteers of America in their residential reentry programs here in Ohio, supporting all of them, um, and being able to advocate for all of the inmates who are transitioning from prison to home and making sure that they're connected with resources that they need to be connected with. I also work for Women Helping Women currently um, with their domestic violence response team. Uh, it's something I'm incredibly passionate about. It's something that we've been able to see firsthand, how it's helped the members of the community um, become connected with different resources and also putting them in, safe, in a safer environment so there's better outcomes for them. So I'm really excited to be able to bring my advocacy skills to Delhi and to be able to work with the community and everyone here just to be able to offer those services. Welcome, welcome, Kayla. Yes, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Barely not so fast. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't get by this one. There's three of us. Okay. Um, first of all, obviously, what they said, thank you for, for saying yes to Dali. It went out, and you said yes, so thank you. And I, and I hope what you saw here tonight was that we, someone like you who's been here 28, 29 years, and we hope you're here for a long time because it, could, it took people like that saying yes to, to doing their careers here in the township. And uh, so lots of great things. I was thrilled to hear the chief also say that it wouldn't just be with police, but we can use you in other areas of the township, which is wonderful for our residents and for the other services that are offered. However, I have a, a strong pondering question that I have to ask you in your uh, bio that you went through. You talked about the University of Cincinnati, and then you went to Xavier. Um, and so I'm just curious, what happens on shootout? Crosstown shootout night at your house. So, yeah, um, I'm definitely a diehard savior basketball fan. All right, I approved the hiring. <laughs> Again. Yeah, there you go. But you see for football. You see for there football, savior for basketball. Yes, yes, absolutely. Very good. You should be in politics. Yeah. <laughs> great job. Okay. Well, thank you. So thank you, thank you so we're much. We're very excited. Great, great hire, Chief. Thank you. Thanks for allowing us to get the position. Okay. It's been a long time coming. Benefit everybody. It will benefit everybody. Again, service to our residents. Okay, thank you. We have a motion to accept the voluntary resignation of part-time police clerk Caitlin M. Cavanaugh in the police department effective December 11th, 2021. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion carried. No. No, you don't want to see her go. No, we don't want to see her go. No. Okay. Well, we, bit, we wish her the best on her next endeavor. I think she's going. Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> Bless Rocky her. Mountain High. Travel safely. Okay. Public works. Remember resolution? Resolution of 2021-194. Resolution authorizing the public works director <laughs> to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Ohio Public Work Commission's state capital improvement and local transportation improvement programs. Declaring an emergency and dispense with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Ripperger? Um, yes, this is for Hillside Avenue, um, close to Anderson Ferry. This is, this is actually phase two, but it's the second time we submitted for this grant. Um, the first time we were awarded the grant, but ran into some major engineering um, problems. So they, get, so they got that straightened out. Um, so the road's in bad condition and it's gonna fix a lot of water problems. We've had multiple complaints down there with multiple residents. So we're pretty excited about that. But uh, it should score pretty good, so we get it submitted. We work with the county on that and the township is not out any funds for the county road repair. So you're the coordinator or the point person? Yeah, yeah. The county mostly puts in the uh, application, but we put our name on it to help them out. 
appropriate. Okay. And you'll communicate with the, the residents down there because obviously they've got they both uh, Yeah, I think there's been some recent complaints and I responded back to them. So, and I believe they have my information if they right. have other questions. But they are aware of this. I saw the one correspondence from you and I thought that was okay. very well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mr. Simi? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. Motion to accept and authorize the Township Administrator and Public Works Director to sign project agreements with SORTA for sidewalk grants. It was $130,407 for Greenwell Avenue between Mount Avenue Road and Don Pike. $356,893 for Neve Road between Foley Road and Dodd Height, and $93,764 for Mount Averno Road between Paul Road and Dodd Height. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Congratulations. Motion, motion passes. Quick question. Have you uh, heard from any of the residents? Are they getting thrills for having the sidewalks there, especially the Greenwell area, because that's been for years debated. But it was always brought up that, well, they want the sidewalks, but they don't want to put on their property tax bill and things like that, which would have been. So this is actually going to happen without that. So we did get one call this week, but we recently sent letters out, so we really haven't had much response from that yet. But they were excited about it, though. Awesome. So is this just on one side? Correct. What's what side? Is it? In theory, as far as I know, they're shooting for the east side, but. Uh, I would assume some of that has to do with surveying and to make sure that you know it works out. But as far as I know, it's the east side. Okay. We have a motion to accept the volunteer resignation of service worker one, Bradley W. Padura, in the Public Works Department, effective December 11th, 2021. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Congratulations. Motion carries. Thank you for your work, uh, Bradley. We wish you the best in your next endeavor. Sad to see Brad go. Yeah, he's been a great employee, Delhi resident, fast response time. But, uh, you know, he's just moving somewhere to better himself. So, good guy. Good night, Matt. Yes. Okay. Thank Anything you. Else? That's it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rippinger. Administration, no agenda items? Or have you had anything at the end? Or do you have any comments? I reserve the right to bring something up at the end. Okay. Oh, Community development. We have a motion to reappoint Andrew Matai to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a five-year term ending December 31st, 2026. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you for sticking with us, Andrew. <coughs> Motion to re reappoint Mark E. Michaels to the Zoning Commission for a five-year term ending December 31st, 2026. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Thank you for sticking with us, Marty. All right. <clears throat> resolution 2021-195, resolution certifying violation of abatement expenses at 1025 Fashion Avenue, 5418 Casual Court, 5348 Whitmore Drive, 5321 Plum Ridge Drive, 289 Anderson Ferry Road, 5248 Woodlake Drive, 5433 Cleves Warsaw Pike, 4288 Skylark Drive, 4301 Del Ryan Drive, 5344 Orange Law Drive, and 425 Morgan Drive to the County Auditor for Assessment, declaring an emergency and dispensable second reading. I introduce to move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Dillon? Well, thank you for letting us get caught up on our uh, abatement expenses um, for the year. With losing our inspector midsummer, we got a little behind on getting these filed. Um, just so the public knows, these range from $475 in um, contractor costs to $875 per property. Um, when we add the administration costs, then this whole total is now down to uh, $7,700, which we will hopefully get collected on property taxes in 2022. Uh, I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. 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 Mr. Booby, please call the roll. Mr. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. 
Resolution 2021-196, resolution declaring distance for accumulated debris at 435 Vaughan Road, declaring emergency expense with second reading. And traditionally the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution as we go along? This is a repeat, unfortunately. Um, Bond Road is actually off Rosemont. Um, we do have an issue with the legal dumping up there quite often, and I believe there's more up there on other properties right now, so we probably need to price seats some more in the near future. But um, it was in the same condition as you see in those photos. So we do request you to clear nuisance. So it's not the property owner's problem. It's people going by necessarily and dumping it. Yeah, we tried to work with the county sheriff's department at one time to put deer cams up there, but they said they just don't work because of the speed people drive through there, because I think they drive through it shut it off pretty quick it's so dark and unseen up there unfortunately sure sure it's a shame yeah. i move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution i second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution all those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading yes 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 mr Luby, please call the roll mr Simi. yes mr davis yeah mrs Kurtz. yes the resolution passes Resolution 2021-187, resolution declaring distance for accumulated debris at 957 East Road, declaring emergency in dispensary with second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? Yeah, this photo unfortunately is a little hard to detail, but there is a bunch of debris around, around that camper. Um, it looks like they're partly dismantling it right now. We did not go after the junk motor vehicle at this point. We're hoping this gets done um, jump started because the junk motor vehicle process is so lengthy and timely. So um, this is a rental property. Um, the children of the owners live at this property, so it's been an ongoing issue at this property. So it is still in that condition, so we do request a declared nuisance. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. Yes. Yes, Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes, resolution passes. And I want to make one more plug because I kind of interrupted you earlier on the uh, holiday market that's this weekend. I unfortunately don't remember the time. I think it's nine to two, but I was I do two. Um, but it is open to the public. Um, stop by the senior center, um, get some holiday gifts, uh, crafts, and things like that. So it is nine to two on Saturday the eleventh. Just as a reminder. Can I ask one question if you don't mind? And it, I know this is not our jurisdiction, but I'm just curious. I've noticed. And I know we talked about before those apartments down on Lower Delhi in Fairbanks. Mm -hmm. And it looked like they've had two dumpsters for that entire complex. How many in the, in the house know what I'm talking about? Yeah, maybe see, okay, good. It looks like it's times 10 now to where it's everything from broken down beds, mattresses, everything. And of course, I'm concerned because this is part of our entryway as you, you have to cross through that to get up in the Delhi. But has anybody, even in the house, has anyone heard of anything going on there? Or is this, is the city dealing with it? Is anybody? Because I, I can't imagine, like I said, I just drove by it just a little bit ago again. It's, I mean, it's taking up almost a quarter of the entire parking lot. Mm -hmm. It's just an unfortunate mess. Um, I do actually get on the city's website, put in a complaint when we do hear them. Um, the city is just like here, they have to go through their due process, unfortunately. I, you know, we can't force them to put more dumpsters down there. No, I agree, but things, so... But, but it's always, if you go into their system, they have a phone number, it's like a website, I think I forget the number is... Or something, yeah, you go on there and put it in, you'll always see it in their system. And yeah. it's always active. Yeah, Trustee Davis, I actually had a meeting with Mayor Cranley on, this, on that property about two years ago. And the city is well aware mm -hmm. of that corner. And the property is actually owned by a way out of town owner. Yeah. I, I believe actually California. California, yeah. And um, just disregards anything that the city of Cincinnati sends them. Yeah. So you so, got all that element, besides the police activity, which is almost weekly now, as you know what I'm talking about, Chief, it's like, you know, they joke about it, like it's the duck zone. You drive and you duck as you go by. It's not funny. No. And now that with the conditions that they're living in, and that stuff, we are literally a block away from it as it, <laughs> as it slides up. And I feel bad for the people that have to live under those conditions, but it does affect everyone. It starts to affect. Take a look at the them. windows. Somewhere. Yeah. So I mean, if it keeps going, it's going to be an unsafe structure because it's literally you can see the ceiling coming down in some through some of the windows. So. 
Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate. It is. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Anything else, Mr. Kim? That's the right. about the We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, this is time for public comments. Nobody has submitted to speak tonight, so we'll move right into announcement of community events. Okay, we won't. Break down our community events. That's great. Uh, so we do have a need for executive session tonight. Motion to retire to executive session to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee of the township and confidential information related to the marketing plans, specific business strategy, trade secrets, or personal financial statements of an applicant for economic development assistance. So moved. Seconded. Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. C. Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Yes. Can I use my time? I reserve oh. now. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Thank you. Well, I had I wanted to go to a different slide, so I didn't want to stop okay. the presentation. That's good. Um, and I will say that <clears throat> for those who are listening, we applied for some capital funding uh, Tuesday. We we made our pitch. We being uh, Mrs. Sturtz, Mrs. C. V. myself. Greg DeLong and Lisa Skovic joined up, joined us to go down to the task force that every two years the state releases capital funds and then they have a process to apply and get recommended. Ultimately it's something that is put in the budget but it's a way for the state to allow their, their <coughs> local, their, our local legislators to bring some money back to the region. Anyway, we, we made our pitch for some funds for our project it hits a lot of their their checklist of things they would like you know job creation economic uh, uh, money into the community multifamily a bunch of different things but the one thing we had in our presentation and i know i sent it to all of you we finally got some some these are the first renderings of what the apartments will potentially look like now this goes through a process where you have to approve them but i thought it might be fun to peruse what, what they're conjecturing. And this is looking from Delhi Pike down into the site. So the, in the foreground is the patio or little bar concession area stages in, the, in front of our building. These are just a few perspectives as they lay it on paper and the stuff ends up filling in. So that was the end of it. And the new name? Oh, yeah. As you see down in, in the, the right-hand corner, they have chosen a name for the apartments. It's Viridian, which I thought was kind of clever. Delhi is related to floral, floral things. Viridian means green and uh, growth and true. So I thought it was kind of clever. I like the name. Good. Thank you. Appreciate it. That was my share. That was your share. Okay, thank you. We were greatly anticipating it. Yeah. Okay, so our next meeting is Tuesday, <laughs> December 21st. <laughs> 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 um, our next meeting is Tuesday, December 21st, same place, same time. Um, and um, we hope you can join us. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna lie.